Welcome everyone to SML Explained. My name is Stefan, I'm the inventor of SML and in this video I want to explain to you what SML is and how it works. So let's get started. First of all, SML stands for Simple Markup Language or you might as well abbreviate it as Simple ML. But before we take a closer look at the Simple Markup Language, I want to explain to you the concept of a simple object. A simple object is a hierarchical data structure that consists of two types of nodes, elements and attributes. A simple object has exactly one single root element. Elements can contain child nodes, attributes cannot. They contain the actual data as arrays of string values. Both node types are named. An element is therefore a named group of child elements and attributes. An attribute, on the other hand, is a named array of string values. Attributes must contain at least one value, and string values can be empty or null. The child nodes of an element are ordered, and both child elements and attributes can have identical names. An element can also be empty without any child nodes. When you are naming your nodes, you are free to use any character that Unicode provides. There are no restrictions on which characters you can use or in which order they must appear. Also note that names are case insensitive. So whether you prefer upper camel case, lower camel case or any other capitalization convention is up to you. They are treated as identical. Now let's have a look at a simple example. Here's a simple object of a message. You can see the root element in orange. It is called message and has four child attributes, which are colored in yellow. The first two attributes identify the sender and receiver of the message, both with a single value. The third attribute is the timestamp, when the message was sent. You can see that it has two values, date and time separated. The fourth attribute contains the message's text. There are no further child elements, so this is a quite simple example. But how do we actually translate this object into a format that can be stored for example as a file? In other words, how can we serialize a simple object? Of course you could use a special binary format and write a binary file. But that would create files that are hard to read for humans and would require programs to comfortably change the content of these files. So instead of writing binary data, you could use one of the existing textual formats or markup languages, like XML. XML is a very powerful markup language and has a lot of advantages. But as you can see, our little example object turned into quite a lot of text with many special characters, just to fulfill all requirements of simple objects. As an alternative to XML, you could use JSON. JSON is another standardized and widely used format. The number of characters is reduced compared to XML, but still there are a lot of special characters. As you can see highlighted in this illustration, the JSON standard defines over 10 special characters. You have to write many curly braces, colons, commas and brackets and every string value must be enclosed in double quotes. Also many characters and string values must be properly escaped. XML has even more special characters and there are a lot of special character combinations, as you can see at the bottom. If you consider yourself a touch typist and type on a keyboard without looking at the keys, you know that depending on the keyboard layout you are using, it can be hard to type certain special characters. Every character that needs a special key combination or is too far from the default finger position breaks your typing flow and slows you down. So how about a markup language that uses only four special characters and is specifically designed to be typed as fast as possible. Well, that's SML, the simple markup language. Here you can see our message example with sender, receiver, timestamp and the message's text written in SML. The only special character used for markup is the double quote character to enclose the message's text. If I would give you the task to type this example into your text editor, I'm sure you would have no problem doing so because it's so simple. Now let's compare the XML, JSON and SML document. The XML document actually needs three times more characters than the SML document 
to encode the exact same information. Using SML therefore saves you typing nearly 70% of the characters required for the XML document, or more than half required for the JSON document. So how does the simple markup language work? First of all, SML is strictly line-based. While XML and JSON allow that the complete content of a document can be written in one single line without any line breaks, that's not allowed in SML. A line in an SML document cannot contain multiple attributes or elements or a mixture of it. One attribute, for example, means exactly one line with all values of the attribute string array. There are no line continuation characters or rules that would allow to continue on the next line. The reason behind that design decision is that an SML document should always be nicely readable without any pretty printing tools. And here is how the simplest SML document would look like. A single root element without any child nodes is written in exactly two lines. The first line opens the element, which is named my root element. The second line closes the element with a keyword that was already used over 60 years ago, the end keyword. As I mentioned before, names of elements and attributes of simple objects are case insensitive. And so is the end keyword as well. You can write your names in upper camel case or completely type it in lower case. You're not forced to obey the capitalization rules of a given SML based format. This allows you to increase your typing speed when you write an SML document by hand. Now that we have seen an empty root element, let's add our first attribute to it. This new line starts with white space to signal that the attribute is a child node of the root element. After the white space follows the attribute's name. The attribute only holds one value, 123, which is separated by white space from the attribute's name. We now add a second attribute, which has multiple values. All values are as well separated by white space, which makes it really fast to type. Right now, these values look like numbers, but remember, an attribute is a named array of string values, which means all values are handled as strings because SML does not define any value types. To visualize that, let's enclose all values in double quotes. In this case, they are not necessary because the values do not contain any special characters. But as soon as a value contains special characters such as white space or the double quote character itself, they become necessary. Here we added a third attribute, which holds the single string hello world. The space between the words hello and world makes the double quotes necessary. Now we want to group some of the attributes. We do this by adding an element to the root element, which we call group1, and moving the first two attributes to it. The new element is closed with the first end keyword in the fifth line. Although the example shows that the lines are indented, note that SML is indentation insensitive. You can use as many tabs or spaces as you want or no indentation at all. But for better readability, it is recommended to use indentation. If you want to put a comment over or behind an element or attribute, you can do so using the hash character. In the example, I inserted a comment line before the start of the root element. I also commented the group one element out and wrote a comment behind the third attribute. Now let's have a look at some special cases of values. If your value contains the double quote character, it is escaped by another double quote. If your value contains the hash character, it also needs to be enclosed in double quotes. If your value is simply the minus dash, it also needs to be enclosed in double quotes. That's because a simple minus dash without double quotes denotes the null value. The second attribute demonstrates this. An empty string is simply denoted by two double quotes. SML also handles multi-line strings. If your value contains a line break character, the value is split into its line strings and separated by a slash without any white space in between. In the example you can see that the first attribute has a value with three lines. I mentioned earlier that an element's child attributes and elements can have the same name. In this example you can see that there are three attributes, all named my first attribute and two elements, both named element 1. 
With that in mind, you can create file lists, like this recent files list, with multiple attributes, all called file. SML uses Unicode and is ready for documents in a language of your choice. If you write documents in French, Japanese, German, or any other language you prefer, the end keyword might not fit into your completely localized documents. You then have the option of replacing the end keyword with a localized one. Here you can see two examples with replaced end keywords. When such a document is loaded, the parser first jumps to the end of the document and takes the last keyword as the end keyword. This brings us to the naming of elements and attributes. There are no special naming restrictions except for one rule, that the name is not allowed to match the end keyword. Otherwise than that, you are free to use any character you want. The same string escaping and enclosing rules apply for names as they do for values. So if your name contains special characters like white space, hash characters or double quotes, it needs to be enclosed in double quotes. By now you probably have already noticed the pattern behind SML lines. Every line is essentially just an array of string values separated by white space. Element lines only have one string value and attribute lines at least two. That's because an SML document is in its essence a WSV document. A white space separated values document or white space SV is essentially an array of string arrays where every line can contain as many values as desired. These values are separated by white space instead of commas as in CSV documents. All the string escaping and double quote enclosing rules I explained before for SML are actually WSV rules. WSV documents can be used to save tabular data. Here you can see a table with four columns that lists several persons with their first name, last name, age and place of birth. Comments start with a hash character and values with white space are enclosed in double quotes. You can also see an age value missing, indicated by the minus dash, which will be read as null value. So you have a format designed for tabular data and a format for hierarchical data that's built upon it. Simply put, that's one parser to pass them both, with only a few add-ons for SML. Just as a visualization aid, I reformatted our SML message example. You can see the first column with all the element and attribute names and the end keyword. The second column holds all first values of the attributes. Only the timestamp attribute has two values, with the second value located in the third column. Another important aspect when dealing with textual documents is the encoding. In order to assure that non-ASCII characters get encoded and decoded in a reliable way, both SML and WSV documents are reliable TXT documents. That means there is no guessing how a textual document might be encoded. A reliable TXT document always writes a preamble in front of the encoded text to signal which encoding technique was used. The preambles are all unambiguous, so every preamble distinctly identifies the used encoding. Four encodings are available, UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-16 reverse or little endian, and UTF-32. You can see here in red the preamble bytes of every encoding and the bytes of the letter A encoded. Another aspect that is clearly defined in reliable TXT is how line breaks work. Lines in a reliable TXT document are separated by the line feed character. All other characters like carriage return or other Unicode characters in that category are considered as white space in their respective line. So the package of SML, WSV and reliable TXT covers all you need for your own textual documents. And we'll never have to write an encoding header like this. That's SML. So give it a try. Open up your favorite text editor and type in your first SML document. Feel how fast you are and how easy it is to type because of the reduced number of special characters and the natural separation of values by white space and line breaks. Choose UTF-8 encoding with BOM, the byte order mark, and save it as an SML file. Give others the file to read and test how human-friendly it is. Even non-experts will decipher the meaning of your own documents. And if you're not a native English speaker, write an SML document in your mother tongue. Well, that concludes my explanation of SML. What do you think? 
would you use SML in your next project? Tell me what you like about it or don't like and leave a comment down below. And what do you think? Which markup languages or file formats could be ported to SML and would benefit of it? I prepared some examples that might inspire you. Let's glance over them. I guess the category of file formats that would definitely benefit from a switch to SML would be configuration files. Also many programming related file formats like make or project files, manifest or metadata files or UI layout files could be easily written in SML. Graphical formats such as 2D vector graphic files or 3D file formats would benefit from the integrated array attributes of SML because those formats heavily rely on 2D and 3D vector arrays. Remember the size comparison of XML, JSON and SML documents? GPS data files could benefit from smaller file sizes when using SML. If you like, you could also put your styling information in an SML document or create a playlist file format with SML. See how clean it looks. You've got your title, an embedded playlist image encoded as Base64 and your playlist files, all with custom names. Video editing file formats or music file formats could benefit from SML as well. You could simply type in your notes and create a song in your text editor. And look how easy it is to define a graph structure with notes and connecting edges. Graphs can be found everywhere, from business processes to structural or behavioral diagrams in software engineering or shader graphs in 3D computer graphics. Nowadays, whole computer games are programmed just by placing nodes and connecting them. Imagine how easy saving these graphs with SML would be. And yes, there are formats that have been around for ages, so why change them? But maybe they could use a bit of fresh paint. It's also not wrong to mix different markup languages. Why not use SML as the main document structure and other markup languages inside of attribute values? With so few characters that need escaping in SML strings, that's definitely an option. And now look at this example that even non-computer experts could write. Maybe future cooking machines will be able to read such recipes written in SML. Another example could come from the field of financial reporting. Report files with financial statements could be readable with SML without any transformation. If your text editor supports folding of SML elements, you could easily start examining your data on the highest level and drill down by unfolding the elements you're interested in. A few more ideas could include data structures for online shops, SML formats for contacts or electronic business cards, or calendar data exchange, as well as project management file formats. I could go on and on, but I think you get my point. There are so many interesting areas where SML might prove useful. Challenge your creativity and post a comment what comes to your mind.